Handsome vs Predator had John Dupe, Charles Lawrence, Stephen Buchanan, Michael Gentile, Jesse Velez, Mike Manzi, David Tiriolo, Michael Popovich, Joshua Cologne, and Jeff Sokol. Nine episodes for ten disgusting predators. We've all seen Hanson vs Predator, probably. This is a video ranking every single episode, and it may be different to how people who follow the channel might have believed I'd rank these. By the way, I'm King Taser, and I talk about a lot of topics, but especially movie reviews and TCAP slash Hanson vs Predator. So subscribe if that sounds like something you'd be interested in. Nine. Most of the bottom episodes are ones where the predators don't go into the house or leave when Chris turns up. Unlike To Catch a Predator, Hanson vs Predator doesn't actually have a bad episode, as evidenced by my reviews, which you should go and watch in this playlist right after this video. But Charles Lawrence definitely has the worst episode because he's a strange old man. In The Sting, the worst decoy in Chris Hanson predator catching history joins this old man, and it would seem that Charles Lawrence is actually innocent because his eyesight truly is shot considering that he didn't leave as soon as this school teacher looking man came out. Charles wasn't scary, wasn't particularly disturbing either, besides trying to bone a minor, but Hanson's palpable disappointment is hilarious to watch. It's almost on a level of that one Harry Potter scene. This is my boy! Overall, this wasn't the worst predator catching that Hanson has done. That's the first episode of Tika, which I made a video about. Watch it! Eight. This one is twice the disappointment for fans of Hanson vs Predator, as we see two predators that could have had brilliant interviews with Chris not meet him, and I haven't felt this upset about a potential predator interview since the gelatinous blob of lust and sin that was Twink Toilet was left on the steps whilst Chris went and got Lewis Conrad killed. By the way, just like Lewis Conrad, a man that I made a video about, Twink Toilet is dead now, so if you want to make his dreams come true, then you can always find his grave and piss on it. Back to popping shits in the in-shape Wayne Rooney, the episode wasn't nothing purely because the Popovich phone calls and the Tiriolo videos at least give the episode a reason for existence, rather than the Charles Lawrence episode, whilst, while not bad, would probably have been an unaired predator in Takasha Predator. It's still not a great episode, though, as Chris only shows up in the narration and in some random part of New York, which just looks hilarious to be honest because it's so unrelated. Bo -bo 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 Love to be naked is up next, and like the others so far, it's because he just doesn't give Chris an interview, but he's by far the most fascinating of the non-interview predators. The 64-year-old limo driver had some incredibly off-putting phone calls with one of the decoys, which is pretty much the reason why he's this high on the list. Hey, my little sex kitten. How are you, sweetheart? I can't wait to kiss you and hold you. I love you, sweetheart. I want to make you so happy, my little angel. I love you, baby, so much. Chris really went in on this guy, which kind of made me feel like he had a special dislike for him, and as a result, we got one of the best no house predators because of Chris Hansen's narration. By the way, is that the right thing to call them house predators, the, the ones that come into the house? I don't know, it's, it's what I'm going to be calling them from now on. But I also find it hilarious when predators turn up to the house and then immediately leave when they see the decoy. Like, you drove all this way just to chicken out? I didn't realize that you were a pussy as well as a child predator. Bravo 6. Going dark. I can already see a debate raging in the comments about whether or not Mike Mansty is a predator or not. Just stop. He is. Even if he wasn't there for sex, he was going to go and meet a 13 year old home alone. It's weird, it's creepy. I'm pretty tired. As far as this episode goes, at times he's too much of a dick and whiny to get any true enjoyment out of him. Him refusing to take a seat for ages is incredibly annoying. Also, Chris doesn't really have any great one-liners and Manzi just has a really annoying voice. But, I will admit, the bit with the police is hilarious and I still maintain that they should have tasered him. We're getting to the great ones now. Cologne is very quiet compared to the others, which is why he's fifth, but he's probably the one that evokes the most anger from me because of the age of the decoy he was here for. Not only was he an arrogant prick when he walked in, but coming to meet a 12 year old? Let's just say that I'm very happy that this plumber got stuck with an initial bond of $750,000 redos. His prolonged periods of silence and quiet answers might have meant that he had nothing really funny to say to Chris Hansen, but it meant that he got grilled like a Nando's chicken. Hansen eviscerated this poo pile to an extent that has been hitherto unseen, not so much with any incredible zingers, but his relentless questioning. He brought his A-game to this one, baby. 
four big guys. And they bust all my eyes, they eat my ass just like apple pie. John the PP is probably the predator across all of TCAP, Hansen vs Predator, Takedown with Chris Hansen, etc, etc, that actually looked like a child's drawing of a paedophile the most. After emerging from whatever sewage system that Satan spewed him out of, Johnny Boo Boo decided that he wanted to be on TV, so he went after a little girl. But it was apparently okay because he had a little boy at home that could vouch for his character. If she wanted to have sex tonight, would you have? No. I swear on my little boy, I wasn't going to have sex with her. An iconic predator, not just for his looks, Da Poo Poo probably had the best comeback of any predator with. And watch football. Watch football? Yep. Who's playing tonight? Steelers and the Ravens. I mean, just look at Chris. He's holding back a smile because even he thinks, ah, oh, okay, you got me there, and continues to destroy the man in front of the watching world. It is sad to see what happened to his family after the sting, on the road that the sting was on, but John Da Poo should be counting his lucky stars that there wasn't a real child to hold his package. Otherwise, he could have been in there for as long as he deserved, rather than measly three years. Three! Yeah, he was gonna kill the decoy. I, I, I don't think that's an unpopular or controversial statement to make. No sane person brings all that to do anything, let alone meeting a child for sex and bringing all of that. Would you like to come with me to the car? I think the fuck not, you Sasquatch looking bitch. Hope you enjoyed prison. That's at the end of the episode though, and the beginning of the episode is not the greatest as he's very cagey about coming in or going out, and when he does he speaks like a dying politician. He feels so stilted and unnatural. He would be lower, but the stuff he brought is just so insane. To clarify, it's not just that he brought guns, but like duct tape, a camera, Combined with him trying to get the decoy into the rolling death trap, he's arguably the most dangerous man to have ever appeared on any of these shows. Two trucks having sex. Two trucks having sex. First thing I want to say is that I think it's absolutely hilarious that this episode caused the pizza place he went to to have to tell people to stop ordering the so cool special. Anyway, his episode is great. He's such a snarky prick, which just allows Chris to piss him off very easily. And we get some great TV. Is that the right word? I don't know. Whatever it was, it was fun to watch. The chemistry is magical. Observe. Explain it to me. Just wanted to come hang out and... It looks like here you wanted to come here and have sex with a 13-year-old girl. Okay. Is there? Is that against the law to like... To, to have sex with a 13-year-old girl no. when you're 44? Yes, no, it's against meet, the law. To meet, to meet a girl. That's all I've done. You see how this looks. So after just a few days worth of chatting, you decide you love her? No. You want to have sex with her? I don't know. It, you it, want to marry her? What do you mean you don't know? She's 13. This probably also led to my best HVP review. Like, the, the man thought he'd be saved by a marriage contract to a 13 year old and that he's done nothing wrong. The man was legitimately both insane and arrogant, which is a perfect mix to go into a show like this. An absolutely goated episode of Predator Catching, only topped by one other Hanson vs Predator episode. Welcome to Jurassic Park. The Goat Episode. The creme de la creme. El hombre también está aquí por si acaso te preguntabas. Fun fact, in the tanks, they've spelt pedophile as pedophile. Not sure why you put that word in the tanks anyway, but to be fair, hey ho it's not my channel. Back to the episode itself, Jesse just has the funniest reactions to everything, like the I live with my dog responses, but also... Who you sent a picture of your private parts. No, I did it. I did? Yes. Ugh. I meet with a lot of people on that website, numerous people on that website will go hang out and I actually still talk to people from that website that I actually made friends with. Mm -hmm. I don't have any friends. I have no friends. The editing team are hilarious this episode as well. Thank, Thank you. you for this actual experience actually because uh, it's pretty interesting actually. Yeah, how old are you? I'm actually 27. Not true. At the time of our confrontation, Velez had just turned 28. And Chris looks so annoyed and goes so hard this episode. To be honest, Everybody but the decoy is on their A game this episode, and he's just so bad he's funny. Sorry, guy. The contradictions, the attitude, the situation. It's all brilliant, 
and it's the reason that Jesse Velez is my number one favorite episode. <laughs>